welcome to worship. Welcome to the members of our St. Peter's family and to all who are joining us. Whoever you are, wherever you are, we are glad to have you with us. Today we are celebrating Creation Sunday. Earth Day is coming up this week on Thursday and I thought this was a wonderful opportunity to give thanks for the goodness of God's creation, to reflect on our role and responsibility as part of this good creation and also on the ways that we often fall short of doing that as well as, uh, as we ought to as, as God desires for us. I made this decision early last week and then as the week unfolded, things continued to get heavier in our province. Um, it's not good right now. This wave that we are in is about as worse as uh, it's been this whole pandemic. And so um, today, rather than changing the entire focus of the service, we will still um, focus on creation. And I think the themes that are lifted up in the sermon about gratitude and grief are um, tools, uh, themes that also fit very much with the pandemic reality that we are living in as well. So we will still focus on creation. In the time of prayer, there will be time um, to lift up the prayers for our province and for all places in our country and world that are struggling so much right now. And so with that, let us continue our worship on this Creation Sunday. We'll begin our worship with our usual time of silence, but this morning I want to invite you to do something a little bit different. In the silence, which will be a little bit longer, I want you to think of a place in nature from your childhood or your youth that felt wonderful or magical to you. To imagine yourself again in that place, the sights, the sounds, the smells, um, and just to put yourself in that spot again. So we'll take some silence for that and I'll bring us together again in a word of prayer. So I invite you now to close your eyes and remember. Let us pray. Holy One, we give you thanks for the goodness of creation, for beauty, for interconnectedness, for life. We thank you for the times and places when in nature we felt your love and presence with us. Help us hold fast to these memories so that we remain always aware of what it is we stand to lose. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild asses quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. For your more lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use, to bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests. The stork has its home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the conies. You have made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness and it is night when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work 
and to their labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. All right, we are on to plan B here. I really wanted to tough it out and stay outside, uh, but it was starting to rain on me and my fingers were going numb. So we are going to just enjoy a little bit of creation here in my house instead. Last November, I took part in an online forum put on by an organization called For the Love of Creation. This is a faith-based climate justice initiative that our Evangelical Lutheran Church is a part of. Now, I honestly don't have a lot of extra time these days for events like this, but there was something about the title of this one that caught my attention. It was called Grieving, Healing, and Connecting with Creation. Like many of you, I care deeply about creation and... I feel completely overwhelmed when I hear the warnings from scientists about how close we are to climate catastrophe. So when I saw grief and healing connected to creation, I thought this is something I want to find out more about. The video call, which lasted about an hour, brought together around 100 people from ac across the country. And it started out actually the same way that we began our worship this morning. They began by asking us to take a moment and imagine ourselves in a natural place from our childhood that had seemed magical or wonderful to us. And after a time of connecting to that place of gratitude, we were then invited to reflect and to share as much as that is possible in such a large group. What breaks our heart when we see what is happening to the natural world? To name the sadness, the worry, the despair, the hopelessness we feel when we're faced with the truth of the ecological crisis unfolding around us. I've since discovered that there is actually a term for this. It's called eco-despair. That sense of hopelessness and helplessness we feel when we're faced with the enormity of the environmental problems of our day. We all know that dwelling on a problem doesn't make it go away. But you've also likely learned that neither does ignoring it. What I experienced on that Zoom call back in November is that having some space to acknowledge my grief, to normalize and honor the pain that I carry about what kind of world it is that I'm leaving for the next generation. By the end of the call, I felt a little less burdened by it. Now this has actually been a more general uh, personal learning as we live through this time of pandemic, understanding the purpose and power of lament. But this was the first time I'd experienced it as it relates to climate grief. To experience how when we honor our pain, when we face it and name it, to say how it makes us feel, that in doing that, we actually release some of the power that it has over us. And when that energy that we were putting into grieving is released for a bit, we find that we have some more energy to put towards other actions, to actually doing something again about the problem. That when grief is released, space is made for hope to move in again. At the 2019 National Convention of our Evangelical Lutheran Church, one of the things that we talked about was reconciliation with creation. Two professors from the University of Regina, David Sachin and Mary Vetter, spoke to this by sharing their own journey as scientists and people of faith. They talked about how science gives us the facts. It tells us just how bad things really are but that science can't give us wisdom for the way forward. This is where faith and spirituality have a role to play. When we look to our faith, when we look to scripture, we have such a deep well of wisdom. We see throughout the Bible that creation is good and loved by God. 
We have the story of the Garden of Eden, this memory of harmonious creation and balance, humans tasked with tending, gardening, caring for creation. We have a vision of the new heaven and new earth in the book of Revelation, this vision of a world redeemed that's free from suffering and death and human destruction. Our faith teaches that we encounter God in this good creation. One of the greatest gifts of a rural community is that we are that much closer to nature, to green space, to the earth. Many of you have a very real connection to creation as you make your living farming, growing crops, raising animals, producing food for the world. In rural areas, we are so fortunate to have that connection to the earth. We have a deep gratitude for the earth that sustains us, gratitude for God's providence and presence in creation. And because of this, we also have a very real and immediate understanding of the cost of environmental degradation, of what it is that we stand to lose. When it comes to caring for creation, there is much work to be done. There is also much to be hopeful for. We're not alone in our call to care for creation. This week, as we approach Earth Day, there are many online events happening across our country. Educational opportunities, chances to connect with other people of faith who are also concerned about these issues. And if you're interested in, in checking any of them out, there are links in the video description below and I encourage you to take a look after worship. And that brings me to the other thing I think we can be hopeful for. And that is the fact that there are so many folks out there already doing this hard work. There are good news stories amidst all the depressing ones. On April 20th, on Tuesday of this week, the Eastern Synod is sponsoring an online event called Oh Poop, an evening with Stella Bowles. Uh, Stella Bowles is a 17-year-old student from Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, and she'll share about how her science fair project prompted a $15.7 million cleanup of the La Havre River. The info to register for this event is also in the description below. There's no doubt that the climate crisis is one of the biggest challenges of our time. It's daunting to say the least because it's not just our individual choices that require reflection and change, but so much about how the entire system that we live in also needs to shift. As we live into our call to care for creation, I invite you to hold both your gratitude and your grief alongside one another. I invite you to recognize their gift and their purpose in mobilizing us to do the hard work of caring for creation. Because connecting to both our gratitude and our grief is what will make room for hope and for action. On this Earth Sunday, we stand in the knowledge that all of creation is God's work in love. We remember and we give thanks that we too are blessed with a place to stand in this love. We are part of God's good creation, this source of life and hope. And for this, today and every day, we give thanks. Amen. Creating God, your fingers trace the bold designs of our Father's face. Let sun and moon and stars and light and what lies in. Sustaining God, your hands uphold, earth's mysteries known, or yet untold. Let waters fragile land with air, enabling life, proclaim your care.
touch thy grace until we praise you face to face. Let us come before God in prayer. O God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen, your great love has placed us in your creation, and you commanded us to care for it. Your works declare glory and strength, and you call us to praise and reverence. Where we have degraded or destroyed earth's bounty, forgive us. Where we have taken beauty and majesty for granted, have mercy upon us. Where we have become estranged from the creatures with whom we share this planet, grant us your peace. Creator God, hear our prayer. As we join together in celebration of the earth, we know that there are many things that thwart our efforts and our responsibilities to your creation. The issues of the environment are often associated with differing political views. For the openness to learn about environmental issues and concerns, we pray, Creator God, hear our prayer. In such a great and complex world, we often feel so small and helpless, as if what we do has no impact on the rest of your creation. Yet we know that because we are created in your image, we are connected with the entirety of creation, just as you are. For an awareness of how our own lifestyles can be modified to help protect the environment, we pray, Creator God, hear our prayer. In an environmental catastrophe, the people who suffer first and greatest are often the poorest of the poor. Yet we rarely hear their voices, silenced as they are by the realities of global life. For those who live in poverty and suffer the devastating effects of flooding, drought, and other environmental issues, we pray. Creator God, hear our prayer. As we live through a global pandemic, we are learning just how precious and precarious life on this earth can be. We pray especially for our province of Ontario and all places around the world that are currently facing devastating waves of COVID. Grant strength to our healthcare workers. Grant wisdom and courage to our political leaders. Grant protection to those most affected by this third wave, especially those who do not have the privilege or freedom to stay at home right now. Creator God, hear our prayer. This day, we pray for those in our midst who suffer from sickness and death. Grant them and their loved ones mercy. Creator God, hear our prayer. God of the sun and the moon, of the mountains, deserts and plains. God of the mighty oceans, of rivers, lakes and streams. God of all creatures that live in the seas and fly in the air. Of every living thing that grows and moves on this sacred earth. We are formed by Christ into your people, called to bring the world into your marvelous light. As the body of Christ, we are entrusted with caring for this earth which you have created. Help us to love and respect it, to repair what we have damaged, to care for what you have made good and holy. Give us the wisdom and the passion to change our minds and hearts and our ways. Let us be the change we pray for bringing about ecological conversion which grows and spreads to every corner of the earth, for our sake now and for every generation which is to come. Amen. While I was indoors, I had a chance to warm up and the sun decided to make an appearance, so here we are again enjoying God's good creation. I invite you to receive this blessing. God has placed us in creation, not as owners, but as caretakers. May the grace of God sustain you. The love of Christ be your glad delight. The Holy Spirit renew the image of God in you day by day. Amen. God be with you this week. I know it continues to be a pretty heavy time as we continue through this lockdown with the stay at home orders as case numbers continue to rise. I hope that you will take some time this week and the days to come to get outside, 
to pause, to connect with the goodness of God's creation that is all around us, that goodness that is within us as well. I also want to say a special word to all of the educators and families with school-aged children. Um, you will be in my prayers this week as we head back to remote learning. Um, it's not necessarily, we know, going to be an easy time. So be kind, be gracious with yourself and with one another as we go through this time. Let us go now in peace to care for God's good creation. Thanks be to God.